Hello and welcome to Caesar Snack Sandwich. Today we're going to take a look at this article here. It's from uh, Geyser and Gelato G Uni. It's like a, it's a, I like it. This is very interesting because it's a case of two protocols coming together using their different Legos to provide a service to other uh, users, to other protocols or other uh, things in DeFi. So I really like this idea. So before I can get into like explaining these these charts here, I'll explain them to you at the end here then you, I should probably explain what these two protocols do and how they can work together. So the first one is Geyser. Now Geyser is a, a place where it, it's like pre-built uh, master shifts or farming contracts. So this is a place where, you know, this is a, a service or a tool that you can use as a protocol to incentivize your people to do things. So maybe you ask them to build an LP token with your governance token versus ETH, and then put it into one of these things and get rewarded in your governance token. So that's the main idea of this. So there are two types at Geyser, and Geyser, there's the Geysers, but uh, what the Geysers do that is special is the Geyser token can be spent during the unstake process to provide a multiplier on the user's share seconds. So what does that mean? So when you, let's say you put, let's say you put in uh, like a hundred dollars worth of LPs, I put in a hundred dollars worth of LPs, we start gaining rewards, right? And then at some time I decide I want to pull out. If I pull out and spend the Geyser token, then I will take a bigger share of the pool at that time. So you will actually, I will be taking some of your rewards. However, you will stay inside the pool and then make up for that. So it's kind of a, it kind of gamifies when to stay and when to get out and how, when you want to get out and uh, so forth. And then the other one is fountains and they also use the geyser token. And what that does is it's kind of during the staking process instead. So let's say I have a hundred and you have a hundred, you put a hundred in and then I come along with a hundred, but I use geyser tokens. So my hundred dollars might be worth $110 worth of LP tokens. So then I get a bigger piece, piece of the pie for the entire time of it. So it's, it's quite easy. It's passive. It's and uh, so forth. Now, the other thing that the fountains can do is they have this optional time-based penalty for withdrawing early. So if you are a creator of these pools, you are a project and you create these, these geysers or these fountains, if you create this fountain, you can put this re uh, penalty for people who leave early or leave after a certain time. And it can be scalable too, like not just a one time. So that's the purpose of this geyser, okay? Now, what is this Gelato G-Uni thing? Gelato Network provides, it says automate your smart contract. So it's kind of like a transaction builder kind of thingy. Now, what does it do is uh, there are three current pr uh, services that the Gelato does right now, and that is limit orders on Uniswap, QuickSwap, and other aggregators. There's actually a whole bunch of other DEXs that have this Gelato built-in limit orders, right? And uh, so this Gelato network is a set of like keepers or kind of like bots that'll perform actions for you at certain times. So you, you can do these limit orders and then you, there's also this G-Uni automated uh, Uniswap version three positions. And that's what we're talking about today. And then there's also these debt position managers and so forth on Aave. So this is the product that we're talking about today. So if you go to this article here, the first one that I showed you, and you come down here, you click on this uh, medium article here, and it'll send you to this one here. Now this one does a very good job of explaining to you what is uh, Uniswap version three and how it kind of works and kind of how GUni can work with Uniswap version three and so forth, but it's not the best article, uh, but you should probably read it and I will use a little bit of the ideas from here, but I do like this one, this article better. So I'm gonna use this one to explain how does GUni work, uh, how they're, how this uh, idea here is using GUni. So I'm gonna use this article to explain things a little bit better and make things a little more clear for you. So there's like some key features of this G-Uni that set it aside from like the other Uniswap version three managers like, you know, Popsicle Vi Finance and, and Visor and so forth is that there's not like a single strategy. The, each 
each pool has its own uh, strategy attached to it okay so and they can be changed as well so now let's look at GUni what does the GUni actually do it says the only two things GUni, do, GUni does are is it wraps the original uh, uh, NFT into an ERC20 token so what does that mean if you supply liquidity to Uniswap version 3 you get an NFT position and that means they're not all the same so they're difficult to put into farms but GUni if you put your uh, if you were if you use GUni instead then you get an ERC20 token and then this ERC20 token can be put into these geyser fountains or these geyser geysers right so that's the main the, the, the first feature and the second feature is it auto compounds fees. So if you supply liquidity to Uniswap version three, then your, your, your money is in a concentrated liquidity position, which is good. However, any fees you get, you have to claim by yourself. However, GUni is going to claim those for you and reapply them to your pool. So giving it that auto compounding, and then you're getting get more and more and more fees based on uh, the, the time you're inside there. So it says here, each GUni position has a, an assigned pool manager. Now it's difficult, you can't, there's no way to find out who that assigned pool manager is. However, it's going to probably be the project in which you are dealing with in the case of this idea here. So uh, let's go, so they control the rebalancing of the liquidity. Okay, so how, how can I explain this better? So think of it this way, okay? So say you are a project and you, you want your, your people to supply liquidity, your community to supply liquidity and you want to reward them for doing so. But you want to give them the benefits of concentrated liquidity in Uniswap. So what you do is you go to Uniswap, you create the pool yourself. Then you take that Uniswap pool and you come to the Sorbetto of Finance and uh, here, and you add and you create a GUni pool with the Uniswap version pool that you have created. So you set that first that first week price range, right? So let's say you have a token and you say, oh, I want my token to be worth somewhere. Uh, let's say it's worth $3, but I want the, the Uniswap version, the Uniswap pool to have a, a concentrated liquidity position of like between 50 cents and $8 on the first week. And then, uh, so let's say it sits around $7 at the end of the first week. And then the second week you manage it and you say, oh, let's give it like uh, the chance to moon a little bit. And we'll go from $1 to $16. And then uh, you notice that it stays around like, you know, $6 or something like that. So on week three, you, you, you bring this back down and you manage it. So this is going to be managed by a single person or a single team or a multi-sig wallet or an entity or something like this or a smart contract so you can if you think of it like a, a project you have a community and maybe you can have some governance here or some sort of a policy team that is setting this range for you guys and trying to uh, balance this liquidity so you you don't get a lot of uh, impermanent loss but you have the uh, benefits of concentrated liquidity but as a user, you basically just come here, provide liquidity. Let's say this is our pool. We just open it up. We would just add liquidity. And then we would go over to the geyser pool, wherever that happened to be. And we would then stick that ERC20 in here and start gaining our rewards and perhaps the geyser token as well, depending on if we wanted to use that. So let's go back over here and take a look at these flow charts and we'll get a good understanding based on this. So the creator is the project. They create that Uniswap pool. Then they create that Gelato GUni pool for the community, right? And they set the two tokens, they set to the price range and they control that, okay? Then the users come along, they bring the two tokens and they stick it into the Gelato pool or and they get back the GUni token. So there is one step for the users. They don't have to go to Uniswap first. They just need to come here and supply to this G, G, Gelato Uniswap uh, pool. They don't have to even go to Uniswap and understand and deal with the whole like 
you know, price ranges and so forth. They just come here with their two tokens and they stick it inside and they get the GUNI pool. Then they take that GUNI and they stick it into the geyser pool and keeping in mind that geyser token can be either, you know, multiply their ingoing if they're using the fountain or when they withdraw if you're using the geyser, right? Now, where does this geyser token go to? It goes to the team. It's a way of paying the team so the team can get their their uh, incentives or their payment in geyser, okay? And then they get this person, you know, puts the GUNI inside here and then, then they get the reward token, whatever that happens to be. And sometimes when they want, they can pull out that GUNI token and, and unwind this position. So that pretty much covers this. Uh, like I said, I like this idea because it's making, trying to make things simple for your community. But, uh, and it doesn't require you to uh, do a lot of coding. It's like, it's already there. So if you're a project and you have a token, you can consider using this and uh, reward and manage, help manage uh, liquidity for your protocol. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much covers it. Um, I thank you so much for watching and goodbye.